to talk trades and you've got an article coming out today on just baseball.com yeah. and you had an international flight to put on your chef hat and get fucking cooking chief oh, what's I the cooked. word i cooked <laughs> and i had a few different a few different trades i wanted to kind of to put together here and it, there's the deadline time is always ridiculous. And that's kind of what I said in the intro. And if, if the article is done in time, cause it's 10 o'clock uh, on a Sunday PM as, as we're recording this and it's almost done. So I'll probably finish it in the morning and then hyperlink it. So if you're one of those folks who listens to us first thing in the morning, I love you, but you also probably won't have the article ready just yet. So check, check out the, um, check out the site at some point by the end of the day. Cause I did put a lot of time into it and I, and it is, it is fun. I tried to base these trades on what I thought was like actually the best fits and both for teams that have pro like the, everyone always just goes to pipeline, picks the three best prospects and sends them out, you know, for, for a big leaguer that they could use. I honestly was looking at it from which teams could use this big leaguer, but then which prospects if I were their general manager, what I think were relatively expendable, expendable has a negative connotation because expendable me oh, comes off to some people like we don't need them. It's not that it's just that you have other guys in that position in the organizational depth chart. And as we get to some examples, you'll see one of them I already floated by you. So you'll, I know you'll already have thoughts on this and this might be a little light. It, 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 it probably is a tad light. I don't know. It's really hard to gauge the value of Dylan Cease. But I wanted to get into that one first. You wanted to say something? Yeah, I, I'm going to cross check them with the MLB trade machine, the trade values, and I'll let you know what those numbers are that it's like, on. So first of all, fuck you. But second of all, sure. No, uh, I'm not going to do that. I, no, you should. You should. I, I almost like, spit my I water out. I don't like it. That's the thing. I, I don't spit like my that. Water out. <laughs> I, if anybody knows one thing about me, I fucking hate that site. I want to take it down. I, I've specifically tweeted at them like, I want you destroyed. Um, <laughs> and, and I feel bad because maybe they did some great people behind it. But shit, man, it's like when you design something and with that's well-intentioned and it turns into something horrible, that's what this is. It's like what Peter was talking about with like R Roko's Bass, which by the way, AI is trash. Yeah. AI, AI, I'm the least worried about AI. That, that shit's not that impressive. But a trade yeah. that I put out, like using this trade value thing, um, the Mets acquire Anthony Solomito and the Pirates acquire Justin Verlander and Daniel Vogelbach. And that measures out to the Mets are netting positive by getting Solomito. Dude, there's I, the, the one thing I want to like encourage people to do. If you're going to highlight this, like, I love that you do that. You, you indulge in this. Give me your worst trade machine worst trades. Ones. If you're going to send me like, I keep, I'm already getting tagged in trade machine. Shit. Like, Aram, what do you think? Like, I, I love people that, that, you know, are sending us trade ideas and things like that. So I never want to be mean. Cause it's not, I, they're just checking in. But when I see that machine, I start like shaking. I start like actually convulsing. So um, only send me the most egregious, like this thing is fucked up trade machine uh, trades that you can pull off where it says like even values. I'll give you my first one though. And, and Jack, you can be honest with me here. Um, Cause, and also you got to take the prospect hat off a little bit um, yeah. because we, we have the prospect hat on. So we get excited about this return, but it's important to note that you're trading Dylan Cease here. White Sox trade Dylan Cease to the Orioles for Ramon Arias, who I think is up very underrated. He's a league average hitter so far this year, but he's under control until 2027. Definitely an upgrade in the, in the lineup for the White Sox. Joey Ortiz, who was our number 66 prospect going into this year and has been fantastic in AAA, spot starting in the big leagues. And then Heston Kerstad, who is 100% going to be a top 100 prospect in our update, is just about big league ready. It might be a little light. Ramon Arias, Joey Ortiz, Heston Kerstad. But Dylan Cease isn't pitching to the Cy Young runner-up ability that we've seen. He doesn't have five years of control. It's, it's two. Um, if I'm not mistaken, which is solid, but I tried to kind of use the Luis Castillo deal as a loose template, which I thought was a pretty fair reference point here. Um, and I thought that this was somewhere near that, uh, in terms of the value, if not slightly more, if you go kind of quality over quantity here, um, because you're also getting a big leaguer, where, where would you be if the white Sox, or mentally, if the white Sox made this trade, I know it sucks because it's symbolic of like, yeah, kind of this new thing, but I think this kind of package 
I'll get to the Orioles side of it. But from the White Sox side, you're rebuilding ish, but it's not a rebuild. This is a very expedited rebuild because all three of these guys would be starting for the White Sox in September. Yeah, I mean, like, let's be honest here. Joey Ortiz is taking the job from Elvis Andrews right now or pushing Tim Anderson to second and playing shortstop. And we know Joey Ortiz would be a better shortstop than Tim He's Anderson. Elite. Defensively. Yeah. Um, so you have your shortstop for the foreseeable future. And, and Colson, Colson Montgomery looks like he could probably play third base. Yes. Yeah. Ramona Rios can do a little bit of both. And what I appreciate about Arias, while I'm not you know, swayed by the sex appeal of his bat. Uh, I am swayed because he was a gold glover last year. My only thought is you're taking Ramon Arias to plop him in Yohan Moncada's spot. So Moncada turns into just dead money. And you're moving off of one of the few guys that helps White Sox fans keep their sanity. I think if the White Sox were to fully sell, The most effective way to do it is to trade Cease. But I think the way the White Sox would do it is trade everybody but Robert and Cease. (laughs) Which is the craziest part, because it's like your two best assets are Robert and Cease. They'd rather half-ass six things than ace two things. Because you are never getting Joey Ortiz. For Gio or Tim Anderson or anything. No no chance. Now, you're not getting cursed at either. And maybe you can swap Arias. Maybe he's not not exciting enough. You can swap him for a Connor Norby or, or for, you know, I think Westberg is actually playing a, a role in that team. They're not going to trade Ortiz and yeah. Westberg, but you could swap him for one of the other prospects, but realistically, you're kind of hoping that Connor Norby is, is Ramon Arias. You yeah. know, Norby has outcomes where he's better, but Arias is not a finished product either. Like he's still getting better in his already league average. I, I agree with you, but I, I would think that if you're trading Dylan Cease, like T.A. is all but gone. Um, some of the other guys are are gone. I think Yoan Mankata could be a bad contract swap eventually if, if yeah. you do that. Like, they need to reset this team. And and I really I break down these deals and my whole thought process behind it. Do you think this might be a little light for Cease? I think it could be, uh, especially with this being a seller's market or it looking like a seller's market. If do I Dem- add Kyle Stowers to that? Yeah, like that makes me feel better about this. Like Kyle Stowers, and then maybe we throw in like a, a reliever. Yeah, sure. Wait, what that that Cano guy? I think he's fine. <laughs> no. no, I was give 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 us Aaron Bummer if I if I'm the Orioles. Yeah. Um. No, man. Like, it's hard because you're you're parting with a staple, but. I think as the objective baseball fan, you have to understand that Dylan Cease becomes far and away the best asset on the trade market and the best asset on a bad trade market can get you the world. So I think you could even up the price. I think Rick Hahn could say, yes, Urias Ortiz Kerstad is a good starting point. Yeah. And and let's see if Mike Elias panics and adds a Stowers. Yeah. And say, oh, you know, we want Stowers. Ah, no, we're not going to do that. All right. Well, what if we throw in a reliever too? And yeah, then maybe they, maybe they do it. And and that's the thing is with the Orioles is I I look at it this way. You are not only giving yourself a shot this year. This Orioles team is very serious, obviously. Giving him, but your help next two years. You now have, I mean, even this diminished Dylan Cease would be leading all Orioles pitchers in F4. Yeah. G-Rod looks better. G-Rod can now settle in and kind of almost take a step back. And be like, all right, I don't need to be an ace. Because it felt like he was like coming up trying to be an ace. The other thing, G-Rod can learn from a stuff monster like Cease. Mm-hmm. That would be an awesome tutor to have. A hundred percent. And and it just gives you that. The, the Orioles need that guy that could go out. There. And I know he hasn't totally been that guy this year. He's been much better of late. But Dylan sees any given night can give you seven shuddy 12 Ks. Yes. Any, any given night. They need a guy that can do that. Like they need a guy that's capable of doing it. So when you get to the playoffs, you have a chance that he can just win you that fucking game. And, because that's my worry about the Orioles as we go, like as they go into the postseason. It's like, who's going to be that? Tyler Wells going to win you the game. <laughs> yeah. Is he going to like you every year? I feel like the World Series team has one or two starts through the playoffs where like a starter just basically puts them over the hill, whether it was that Javier no-hitter, a Framber, you know, with with one of those outings. We've talked about some of the other teams, you know, that have won it in the last couple of years where you just have that statement start uh, from a guy 
that that really preserves the bullpen that that slows an offense that's working and and gets things rolling. I mean, Snell was doing that for the Rays. They then ultimately come up short, but he had some of those statement starts to get them there. Like, I, I think that that is a big part, and it's hard to quantify. Yeah, I got one more. Uh, oh, I got two more. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to decide which which I want to choose because we've talked enough about Shane Bieber. I'm actually going to skip that one. Yeah, good. I have the one that I was texting you about that I said you were gonna you were gonna love. I have no fucking clue how to value this guy, by the way. Mets trade Max Scherzer to the Diamondbacks. <laughs> I'm coming home. Yeah, I'm coming. For home. Alec Thomas, <laughs> AJ Vukovic, who's playing out of his mind, and you mean Lynn. <laughs> I don't know. So what is, so I like, and honestly, like this is me being transparent with our listeners. I'm not going to pretend to be the know-it-all that has an understanding of what Max Scherzer's value is. Max Scherzer has been diminished as well and still has been great. He's also been really, really solid of late. And he still would be instantly, you know, the, the guy for the D-backs other than Zach Gallon. And now you have those back-to-back guys where you're like, okay. I feel really good. Kelly gets healthy too. Yeah. But then, then he's a three as he should be. And I know he's been pitching out of his mind, but Merrill Kelly, the three, it's like, Oh my gosh, that's a great one, two, three. Um, Thomas needs to change scenery. And I think that the Mets could use some control in the outfield. Starling Marte looks kind of cooked. Um, and, and this is a cheap guy that can kind of help them work around the other things. Vukovic is a really, really solid bat that has been better and better and better this year. And then Yumi and Lynn's been one of the most impressive stories in terms of pitching prospects that we didn't expect much of going into the year. Lefty that has just been nasty. I tweeted about him earlier today. I think he struck out 10 plus in like three of his last five outings. Yeah. I, the problem with Scherzer is you got whatever he's going to be owed the rest of this year, which won't be cheap even after the deadline. And then you got 43 million next year. If the if the Mets don't eat a dollar, is that the what the return should be, or do the Mets need to eat some money for Alec Thomas, AJ Vukovic, who I think is a top ten prospect in this system, and Yumin Lin, who I think is a top fifteen prospect in this system? I think the Mets, because what's been abundantly clear from Uncle Steve is that he's willing to eat some money to improve the system. He did it in the Angels trade. Yeah. Uh, with Eduardo Escobar, and he's emphasized the importance of the farm system. It's also hard to value Alec Thomas. Is Alec Thomas still valued as a top 100 prospect or mm-hmm. slightly below that? I think sl- I think below that. Um, you think Alec Thomas is valued higher than Joe Adele is at this point? Yes, because I think Joe Adele's failed more. He has, but Thomas has failed now multiple times. But then again, so had Kelnick before this year. So... It's a very, this is hard, both on the Scherzer front and the Alec Thomas front. My thing is, where do you want Vukovic to play? When when you look at, and I know, you know, hey, you're getting the best bat available in the organization and, and you will, you know, push him up in a situation that makes sense. But is he going to play third base? He's played third base a good bit this year. Like that's Beatty's spot for the foreseeable future. Is yeah. he going to play center field? Like that's Nimmo's spot. He, you're you're getting him to play left, but Alec Thomas is such a gifted defensive center fielder. Like where does that push Nimmo? But Nimmo is a great center fielder. Where does that put, I don't know. It, it would be hard for me to figure out where all the puzzle pieces fit with that return. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the interesting thing is what, what would the Mets want in a trade for, for Scherzer? But what I seem to to be gathering, everything I've read and heard from you know, from from what Steve Cohen says is, we want to bolster this farm. And you know, Vukovic is a good prospect who's still a couple years away, who has played first base, third base, center field, left field, right field, which is nuts, by the way. Yeah. Uh, maybe they don't want Alec Thomas. Maybe they want more prospects instead. Well, maybe they want you know what I'm saying like maybe they want a a, a lower level guy. Instead, to bolster the farm, I that might be what they want, but I'm also looking at next year. There's a world where Alec Thomas might be better, a better option than Starling Marte. Yeah, I don't know. I'm with you. My thing is, you know, look at 2024. What does the Mets rotation look like? And it's it's so tough because we've talked about the top heavy rotation, four and five have been such a problem, so I'm almost incentivized to 
take a Dre Jameson, like take a guy like that. that a Dre like the, I haven't published the article yet. So this is, we're almost workshopping an article with folks. Uh, um, I think I think a Dre or I don't think Arizona would move Ryan Nelson. Honestly, I have no idea how they view Tommy Henry, but I think one of Dre Jameson, Tommy Henry, um, or, or one of these, you know, upper levels, minors guys, like shit, maybe even five. Yeah, I think. I think Jamison makes sense. And Jamison's better than Lynn. Like if you swap Jamison for Lynn. Yeah. Cause I think you want proximity too. Yeah. I think, I think that's what we'll rip. Okay. And then should I throw in Bryce, uh, Bryce Jarvis, former first round pick? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So Jamison, Thomas Vukovic and Jarvis. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that could, that could get it done. Is that too many prospects? I don't know. I don't know how to value Max Scherzer. I don't know how to value Max Scherzer take out, either. Take out Jarvis. Just leave it as those yeah. three. Okay. Alec Thomas, Dre Jameson, and AJ Vukovic. Yeah. I like that one. All right. But regardless, what I really want to see is Max Scherzer in Arizona. That's yeah. that's my priority here is bring that guy back home. Wouldn't that be so cool for him to finish out his, his career, presumably, in Arizona? It would be awesome part of this young team instead of joining a, a team of a bunch of other vets that you know we're like you know i think everyone just kind of shows up to work and plays and whatever and obviously it's not working great i, I would love to see a scherzer that kind of tutors zach gallon a little bit you know zach Gallen, fought, you dude know? how about hey i'm gonna grab you from the gutter and pull you out yeah I, let me help you brandon Fott, but also just let me provide some veteran leadership to the not that they need leadership they, they seem yeah, to be got, doing great but here's the thing though You've got this youth. You have this insane amount of young talent. If you have Max Scherzer for the pitching staff and Evan Longoria for the hitters, sign me up for this. Longo's playing time. great, by the way. Longo's playing awesome. I would like, he hasn't been in Arizona since 2009. That's it before he got traded. I would just, I would love to see that. I, and I think he, he has the no trade clause. And that's kind of why I threw that in there is I figured there needs maybe, to be some maybe, sentimental value there. Yeah. Why not finish it out where you started a, in a place where you're going to have kind of like, we hear so much of these older players that are on like the final stages that join a young team or, you know, we, everything with Joey Votto that we've seen with the Reds and it like revitalizes them a little bit. It, it reminds them of, of what it was like to be a young player or just with, you know, playing with nothing to lose and, and having that love for the game. And I, I think this would be the perfect way for the rest of this year and then next year for Max Scherzer to kind of ride it out. Yeah. This one is, is, is like, the, I'm wild in trade, but I love it. Um, Padres trade Blake Snell and Josh Hader to the Angels for Edgar Caro, Kyron Paris, and Jorge Ruiz. Yes. A billion times yes. Um, so, my Blake only- Snell, I'll just give you context and then I'll leave you. The, the floor is yours. Snell, free agent after this year. Josh Hader, free agent after this year. Both not cheap. That's why I don't think the return has to be crazy. Edgar Caro, though, is one of the best prospects that will probably be available at this deadline. Sorry, now the floor is yours. No, so Caro, I think, should be viewed in a, base, in a very, very similar light to that of Logan Ohapi, where you could flip him 1-1 one, one for a legitimate like multi-year of service starter Mm -hmm. in the outfield or in the infield. And and not many guys have that level of prospect capital, but Carroll holds that. So I think Carroll for hater straight up gets it done. That might actually even be an overpay. It'd be slightly expensive for if hater had a year of control after it would be about right. But yeah, I agree with the rental. It's an overpay. So that's why I kind of think it balances out well. And, and that is Edgar Carroll might be a guy that not many baseball fans know when you think prospects like the Carrows, two of the best catching prospects in baseball unrelated right, are not related, have the last name Carroll. And Jefferson, they're in the same league. Yeah. Yes. Jefferson in the Brewers system and Edgar in the Angels system. They are both 20 years old in double A. Yes. And, holding and, and that's own. the important thing. Jefferson might even be better now. And, and you, you know, I've been, badgering you about Jefferson Carroll for a long time now, ever since I saw him in the Arizona fall week, but Edgar switch hitter and people look at the numbers like, Oh, where's the power and whatever. He shouldn't be in double a, he basically skipped high a, they sent him to double because uh, from what I was told, 
they really liked the coaching staff in double a for him and wanted him to continue to work on the defensive side of things yeah. and, and just keep developing. So this kid's a switch hitter learning to catch more advanced pitching, just turned 20 posting above average offensive numbers, walking, not striking out. And, and the power hasn't totally come yet, but they don't need him because they have Logan Ohapi and he's not far from the big leagues. So I think this is a perfect trade chip. And then it's one of those in-betweeners where you don't want to trade Caro for Hader because if you're trading Caro, you, you, you want control. You're not going to get control in this deal, but you're getting a package of players here that could put you over the top. And we know that the Angels have to be, they have to be like borderline reckless because they need to sell Shohei Otani on returning. And this could kind of be an audition for Snell or Hader uh, in terms of maybe wanting to sign them. These are two free agents. You get kind of an, an up close and personal look. Two guys that are not shy of the headlines. Two guys that are big personalities. So probably a good thing to get them up close and personal, see how they fit in. But the way Snell has been throwing lately, yeah. that guy could be your best arm in the postseason. And he's been there. And then Josh Hader looks like, jo- like Josh Hader this year. And they have Estevez already. You put Hader, who snub, by the way. Um, yeah. If you put Hader with him in the back end of that bullpen, along with Otani, Snell, and 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 Detmers, and I, this looks like a complete, pretty complete team. Yes. So here's what I'm looking at. Um, you move Berea to a full-blown bullpen role instead of the swingman role that he's in, or you just full-blown put him in the starting rotation and kick Griffin Canning to the long-term reliever uh, role. But like, if you can stack Estevez in the eighth and Hater in the ninth, that turns into Cano Bautista type shit. That's awesome. I feel a lot better about this postseason four, and I know you got to get there, but I feel a lot better about this postseason four if Snell is in the fold because right now it's Otani, Detmers, Patrick Sandoval, and Tyler Anderson who's at a mid fives right now. And Sandoval is at a mid fours. Barry Jekyll and Hyde for Sandoval. Yes. If you can give me Otani, Snell, Detmers, and whoever you feel good about in mid-October between Anderson and Sandoval, like, give me that, bro. That sounds awesome. And that was the number one thing for me was upgrading that third spot. Because right now it's like, you, you, you don't even know who the third starter would be at this point. It's probably Sandoval at this point. Like maybe, but then unless Tyler Anderson gets hot, and then it's probably like it's it's nobody is is holding on to that third spot. So if you can push that conversation from the three spot to the four spot, you feel exponentially more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you might not even have to go to the four spot in the playoffs if 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 you can ride those three the the way you want to, um, and so- have Berea available for long relief to like that guy, that multi inning reliever, the guy that can start a game in a pinch or can give you five out of the bullpen, is so massive in the postseason. That's why the Astros were set up so well with Luis Garcia out of the bullpen and Hunter Brown out of the bullpen. Like you need to have some starting depth, and you have to view Berea as starting depth. A hundred percent. And so I, people might not like it. I don't know. I'm curious to see what people think. Let us know in the YouTube comments. I'm kind of just messing around. It's literally trades. I'd like to see like, this would make me happy and I'd enjoy it. I think you're in the the same boat. There's several others in this article. So go check that out. Um, but yeah, like, it, would you want to see these? Yes. I want chaos. I like trades. I, I, I love NBA free agency because so much shit is happening. Um, I love an active MLB trade deadline. To be honest, I love the time sandwiching the lockout between uh, ahead of the 22 season. Oh, that was, that was electric. Yeah. Cause it was fucking left and right. Like passing was tweeting 20 times a day with big time news. I, I love chaos and the Chapman trade gave me a bit of a taste. Yeah. And I want bigger shit. Like I want more. I want a trade deadline. 